The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Hello, I'm Dale Leftwich with Real Agriculture. I'm with Barb Zeisman, Provincial Plant Disease Specialist with the province of Saskatchewan. Uh, how are you doing today? Pretty good, yeah, thanks. Great, Barb. You, uh, you uh, gave one of the presentations today on, uh, on diseases and oilseed crops, and so I just wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about that. We're at the Western Forum on Pest Management. Uh, what are some of the trends that you're seeing in, uh, in oilseeds, particularly canola? So generally we saw lower disease levels this year. It was dry across most of the province. Um, but the interesting is that we did see variation in the different provinces as well. But generally speaking, lower disease levels, um, black leg was a bit higher. We had about 70% prevalence across all three provinces. When we talk about prevalence, we mean the number or the percentage of fields that we looked at that had the disease present. Whereas sclerotinia, we did see lower levels. Um, it ranged anywhere from a 30% prevalence to a 50% prevalence, depending on the province. So yeah, let's just talk a little bit about prevalence, incidence, and, uh, and then uh, the, there's a third name that you have too. Do you want to just explain mm -hmm. the difference between them? Yes, yeah, so when we look at diseases, we do look at prevalence, incidence, and severity. Right, so, yes. Yeah, so prevalence is the percentage of fields that have the disease. Yeah. So regardless of how much, it's a yes or a no. Mm -hmm. Incidence is when we do a survey, we look at a set number of fields. So we typically, or a set number of plants, typically 100 plants. So incidence will be the percentage of those plants that have that disease. Whereas severity, it gives us that indication of how severe, or how much impact that disease is having on that crop. And so when we do severity, for example, sclerotinia or black leg, we have a rating scale. So when we see the disease, we rate it on a 1 to a 3 or a 1 to a 5 scale. And then based on that, we get an average severity. So that gives us an indication of the impact of that disease as well. So black leg is an interesting uh, disease in that uh, it turns out there are, there are a great many different types of black leg in Saskatchewan, or in Western Canada, I mean. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are comparing that to Europe. You want to just give those numbers comparative? Well, comparatively, um, we heard from Gary Pang today that right. we have about 100 races. Yes. So and when we talk about races, we're talking about the individual genes in the pathogen and how they relate to the resistance gene in the host. So that means we have a very diverse population. Mm -hmm. So which really makes that scouting and that individual surveillance on your field really important because we can go out and we can look. And typically, it's okay to see some black leg. Um, but if you're seeing really high levels of black leg, so above 30% incidence, so if you look at 100 plants and you see 30 of them have black leg, that gives you an indication there may be some resistance. Breakdown or shifts in the pathogen, so may, you may have a race of the pathogen or a type of the pathogen in your field yeah. that can actually overcome the resistance gene that's there. So it gives you that indication that maybe you need to look at using a different variety so you're ensuring that you're getting optimal management when you use a resistant variety. So in other parts of the world, they have very vir virulent types of, uh, of black leg, but uh, Western Canada is unique for just the, the overall number, and th that would uh, probably make it easier to f to, uh, for these pathogens to overcome resistance, right? Exactly, yeah. So we have a smaller number of specific genes, but what we're seeing is that in the different races, we have some races of the pathogen that have multiple different avian list genes. Right. So it's very easy for them to be able to shift under small levels of selection pressure to be able to overcome some of our management strategies. It's something that uh, black leg is, is, is always just lurking around the corner, right? Even when we've got, uh, we seem to have it under control. The new disease, of course, is uh, club root. And, and uh, there was a big survey done. Uh, do you want to just talk about where we are in terms of surveying uh, uh, club root? Yeah, so in Saskatchewan, in response to some findings that we had in 2017, the ministry with our partners with SAS Canola, as well as the Saskatchewan Association of Rural Municipalities, so mm -hmm. SARM, we got together to do an intensive survey. So we covered 1,800 townships across the major growing regions. So we did the northern agricultural region and a large area on the east side of the province. In each one of those townships where canola was grown, we selected one canola field in the center of each township. So we looked at the field for visible symptoms. Mm -hmm. We also collected soil for testing to detect if the pathogen was there at low levels. So we're finished the infield department of the study, mm -hmm. and now we're just waiting for the results and we're compiling data. So our hope is to get the information out as soon as possible. Um, and we're hoping to get a clubber distribution map as well. 
So our goal is to get that information out kind of late 2018 or early 2019. So the survey went uh, was done then and without hitches then, I guess? Eh? Yeah, it went very well. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's excellent. Uh, what they're finding in Alberta, it sounds like, is that uh, the club root pathogen is uh, changing fairly significantly. Yeah, so this is another pathogen that's very genetically diverse. Mm -hmm. And so if we look at the history, so club root has been found in Alberta since 2003. Mm -hmm. The first resistant variety was available in 2009. In 2013, was the first year that they found a field that was seeded to a resistant variety, but it had very severe levels of clubroot, indicating that there was resistant breakdown. So that's only four growing seasons. And so since then, they've actually identified a number of other virulent pathotypes, so mm -hmm. types of the pathogen um, that can overcome resistance. So it, it shows that we, when we do grow resistant varieties for clubroot or fields where the pathogen is present, we need to be keeping that in mind and protecting the resistant varieties that we have. So the resistant varieties came out and they do work, but it, the, the farmers really have to remember that rotation is very, very important in terms of this and other best management practices. Oh, exactly. So this is a disease where IPM is critical. So we need to be using rotation to keep those pathogen levels low. So that's going to help you with your yield. So it's going to reduce the yield loss, but it's going to help reduce that selection pressure on the pathogen. Um, resistant varieties are an extremely effective tool, but we do need to protect them by using them with rotation. Um, and then we also wanna be thinking about minimizing the spread. So sanitation, I know is a really scary term. And most people, when they think sanitation, they think eight or 10 hours of work. Mm -hmm. But even taking that 10 to 20 minutes before you leave a field and knocking as, off, as much dirt off as possible is a huge step. Or thinking about seeding your exit and using that as a quick sanitation area. All these little things are gonna help us prevent the spread of the disease. Okay, well, I uh, just want to thank you, Barb, for being with us today on Real Agriculture and giving us just a little bit of a summary of, of the, the uh, oil seeds uh, disease report from the Western Forum on Pest Management. Perfect, thank you.